Hi, it's Victoria Laurent Fabish, holistic psychotherapist and life coach, and been a bit of time, but I've, uh, as I said, been working on my book, and a lot of my free time is devoted to that endeavor. But I, I, you know, want to communicate with you guys um, when I can, and when I have a gem to drop in, and I do want to bring this gem to you, which is a technique for couples to communicate better. Okay, not everyone has money to go and see a, a therapist for couples therapy, but this is, I find, the core of so many of the problems with couples that I work with is. When there's a communication dynamic interaction about any kind of contentious triggering topic, you know, people are immediately reacting and reacting from the hurt child, from the baggage of childhood, from the family of origin, what they observe with their parents. And I mean, it's just not working and people are largely unconscious of these kinds of things. So I want to invite you to please become conscious of your communication style and what you yourself are contributing to the dysfunction of the communication. And a technique that I use immediately to stop this child-on-child -child interreaction that just creates damage, resentment, builds walls, and really just basically sends a couple to breaking up uh, <clears throat> is a technique um, very much used in many different circles, but we uh, specifically it's called initiate and reflect. And it's a mirroring exercise and I just want to simplify it and have you use it because if you have children this is going to save your kids having to live in deep tension which is so hard for kids they become um, extremely hypervigilant and you know anxiety uh, d disorders develop from kids growing up in highly tense arguing homes so you know do yourself a favor as a soul um, to start to use this instead of fighting okay instead of fighting because fighting without a purpose and without a proper communication technique is just useless damaging uh, experiencing uh, and this is not to say that you don't acknowledge your feelings and so this is the technique you have to acknowledge what you're thinking and feeling but you also have to acknowledge before I give you the technique let me give you this backstory here or this back information it's like everything that you're experiencing in a fight or in a trigger is your story and your vision and your perspective on a situation. It's not necessarily shared by everyone. So what is important is that you own that it's your story. And so it's important to say that a, a sentence when you're feeling triggered by something that was said to you or done to you or, or experience that you might have had in your in your couple interaction. And instead of going, why did you do that? And you know, what's wrong with you? And I, you know, it's like, you, you know, that really peeves me. And you know, it's like, and then I'm out of here and storms out, boom, or yelling match, what's wrong with you, blah, blah, blah. Instead, work on a sentence that you write down right now. I feel blank because I think blank. So it's your story, but it starts with I. I feel sad, glad, mad, hurt, confused, frustrated, angry, annoyed, okay? Ignored, abandoned. Um, these are key words because I think, again, I think my story, my perspective that um, you are rejecting me. So I feel abandoned because I think you are rejecting me. Okay, and then you can continue with uh, when you uh, when you leave a conversation without telling me when you're going to come back. Example, uh, or I feel angry because I think you are uh, doing uh, that activity deliberately because I think you are not taking out the garbage on purpose to piss me off. Okay, sorry for the swearing, but it's very much important. I feel sad because I think we are growing apart uh, because we don't communicate or from my perspective. So it's all I feel because I think, and it's a, a lead sentence, write it down. I feel blank because I think blank, okay? You own it, you're specific, and then what's powerful is that the other person simply mirrors back to you, so you feel because you think. So you feel sad because you think uh, that we are growing apart. Is that right? That's the lead sense. Is that right? And the other person says yes or no. If they didn't get it right, no. Repeat it and have the person repeat it back to you exactly. You feel because you think, which is the exact mirror image of I feel because I think. Now, the continuation of this is, is there more? That's a, such an important question. Is there more? And the person A that started, yes. And so they get an opportunity to simply feel heard. Simply feel heard. 
So often people do not feel heard, acknowledged, empathized with in fights or in disagreements. And the best and most healing uh, technique is to hear the other person specifically, convey to them that what they say has been heard, taken in, metabolized, and then brought out as simply an acknowledging statement. So people ask me, so what do I do with this? You know, what do I do with this? Does that mean that, uh, you know, I'm never going to get them to sort of uh, any any sort of resolution? That's right. Sometimes all that's important here is not getting to a solution, but simply having the feelings heard. There's no way that one person can uh, solution for the other person's feelings. Your feelings are your responsibility. It's not the other person's responsibility to solve your feelings. But what is in coupledom important is to have each other be heard and have each other be empathized with. So the technique to summarize is, I feel because I think. And then the other person would say, so you feel because you think. Is that right? Yes or no? Is there more? And the person, ha and then you do that for about, I would say maybe 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and then the other person will have a chance to say their own, I feel because they, I think. And it goes that way. And you just have one person do their piece, the other person do their piece, and then rest on that. And that's something you need to maybe practice with weekly or bi-weekly, where you're getting used to using those words as opposed to reactivity right away. Very important for you to um, see this as another way to communicate with your partner. This creates a fair, safe, sacred atmosphere between a couple. And believe me, it really, really works. And how you start the whole thing is a person needs to ask permission. Um, can I initiate, will you reflect, is one way to ask it. Can I initiate, will you reflect? And another way would be, can you mirror me, please? And the person gets to say yes or no. If they say no, make sure that the person saying no says, no, right, not right now, but in an hour from now, at such and such a time and place, I will be open to listening or having you hear me and, and, and mirror me. Um, so this is, uh, or me mirroring and hearing you. So that's, that's a, some, people do have a choice to say no, but make sure that you don't just say no, but you say no, but not right now, but in such and such a time, I will be open to engaging and initiate and reflect with you and mirroring you. Uh, because clearly what your partner is saying is, I'm feeling triggered and uh, I don't wanna, you know, fricking fight with you and crawl down your throat and create a big problem. I am looking to be heard and to be uh, acknowledged and, and, and that's going to calm me down somewhat, uh, quite a bit. So I offer you this technique, initiate and reflect or mirroring and uh, use it so that you can create a better atmosphere in your home and not use fighting in a destructive way. All right, my name is Victoria Lorient Fabish, holistic psychotherapist. I do invite your brief and short questions, and when I can get to you, I will. All right, have a fantastic day, and I'm sending you all such beautiful, high vibration energy. Bye for now.